You're listening to Bigfoot Society Podcast, hosted by our captain, Jeremiah Byron, where it's all Bigfoot all the time. Have you ever had the urge to do more, to be more? Now you can by joining Bigfoot Society on the Patreon. Get ad-free episodes and even member-only episodes. Take part in movie night and even live video chat. Interact behind the scenes with Jeremiah and other Patreon members like me, Leia. The powerful podcast goes on and you may contribute a verse in our Patreon community. Carpe diem. Seize the day, Bigfooters, and make your lives extraordinary. Welcome to Bigfoot Society. If you have Bigfoot activity to report from the same areas discussed in this episode, please reach out to me directly after this episode. And if you'd like to be on the podcast to discuss a personal Bigfoot encounter, please reach out to me directly at BigfootSociety at gmail.com. Do you wish there was more Bigfoot Society to listen to every week? Well, there is now. If you become a supporting member over at Patreon, you get a special members-only episode every single week on Wednesdays and sometimes even more episodes. Head on over to patreon.com forward slash the Bigfoot Society. And now let's get on with the show. Hey, this is Jeremiah. Hey, how are you doing? Doing good. What was your name again? Sorry. Uh, Life's Adventures. Oh, Life's Adventures. Real. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, Jackie, can you also hear Life's Adventures besides myself? Yes, okay. Looks like. All right, so, and you are from uh, out in the Peoria area? No, I'm from Pecatonica, which is northern Illinois, okay. and I'm, I've been studying a, I've been studying a group of Sasquatch up here, and I've been following following them through the state. Gotcha. I study all over the state, and I study in Wisconsin. Uh, I research in uh, Michigan, um, basically the surrounding states. They're all over the place. And uh, do we have? Are you? Are you listening to the show in the background as well? Yes, I am. You want me to turn it down? If if you don't mind, because it's causing a feedback loop, at least for me, it's it's hard to um, pay okay. attention to you. Thank you. Okay, I gotta I gotta shut down, man. Awesome. What was the town where your your main research happens again? So I can bring it up on screen with the map. Pecatonica, Illinois. Ooh. It's that- a small town. Small town, farming community. It's got a uh, gas station and a bar and a post office. <laughs> All right, Northern Illinois, you said. Yep. Okay. Uh, check check for Winnebago County, uh, Rockford area. Okay, gotcha. So, west of Rockford, west of Rockford. Okay. Rockford. Winnebago County. All right. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. Well, now we're all right. We got this on the screen. Okay. That gives people a, a feel. F- oh, yeah, there it is, Pecatonica, right there. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, so, uh, yes, sir. Uh, what brings you I, I've been, into to call about? Well, you guys said you uh, you had a lot of questions on your on your panel about do they cloak. In a sense, they do. They have. I've been studying these creatures for almost forty years, so you know I've got a lot of history on these uh, with these creatures. A lot of information that a lot of books and stuff don't have. I've actually been chased by these creatures. I've been attacked by these creatures. I've been, you know, I've I've studied. I got up more close and personal with these creatures than that moneymaker could ever dream of. You know. Um, Do they cloak? I'm going to tell you right now. Yes, in a sense, they do. They have a, a fluid in their skin in their skin or their hair that if they're standing in front of a tree like a chameleon, they could they could you know blend their their the the color of their fur to that to to that tree and blend right into that tree. But they don't really cloak or turn invisible. They just they're still standing there. They're just the same color as their background. Now, some people say they can kind of see a shimmery thing. Is that something you've noticed as well, or? Yeah, I don't know what that is. I'm trying to trying to figure out what it is. It's probably part of the cloaking process, I believe. 
the the camouflage. I call it camouflage because that's basically what it is. They camouflage when they blend into the surroundings, you know, like a chameleon does. Um, but yeah, um, these orbs that people see coming off the Sasquatch. Now, Sasquatch when they sleep, the reason we we don't see them at night or see them during the day when they're sleeping because you know they can't see very good during the day. That's why they they sleep during the day and hunt, hunt at night and move around at night it is because their the eyesight is real bad so when they sleep during the day they sleep inside uh uh like caves that have methane gas they they're safe inside there for man because man can't go in there because man can't breathe methane mm, right so at night when they come so, so at night when they come out of the methane uh caves the methane that's caught in their fur hits the oxygen and turns colors. Different orbs, uh, green, red, blue, people see orbs coming off them. Those, that's just the methane gas coming off their fur. And people want to uh, uh, believe that those are some kind of paranormal type orbs and they're not. It's just gas buildup that's being released from their fur. Now, do you think this is a flesh and blood creature, or there's something more going on? Oh there? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. They don't. If they were, if, you got you got to look at the common sense. If they were smart enough to open a doorway to a different uh, dimension or a different uh, world, don't you think they'd be smart enough to communicate with us? Mm. I mean, they are a, they are a hom they are a hominid, but uh, but. Uh, I mean, and they do got intelligence about them, but they ain't that intelligent. Come on. Um, you know, I mean. Well, I mean, it, that's a tricky one. I've I've heard either ways. I have heard some really, really interesting things where they show uh, that they can be incredibly smart. But have you had any experiences where you get really close to them or you get a good look at, at their face where things got really intense? I'm not, I I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you a story I, okay. I I told on my channel. This is true. This is true story. This is back in the '80s. This is before YouTube and and videos and phones and everything. You know, we didn't have cell phones back in the '80s. So, but um, I was at I was at this one spot and it was uh, it was in Oklahoma, and uh, it was a campsite. And I'm in the campsite and I figured, okay, I'd set up here, and I set the tent up, and it was a nice spring as uh, uh spring day and there, there was a creek uh a river or a creek you know, more of a creek about 100 feet from me and uh all of a sudden i hear these grunts and stuff and i'm like i look up and there is this i don't know how to <laughs> this i look uh, how, how can i explain this it was a as big as a tree i mean the thing was huge just looking at me i'm like i'm dead he was like 10 maybe 15 feet close to me he was that close i'm like man he must have been hunting me or something all he did was sit there and stare at me you know, and watch me everything i do i i finished putting up my tent i didn't try to run because i know with these creatures if you run they will think you're prey and they will chase you down they will rip you apart and they will eat you i have i've actually seen people get ripped apart by these creatures so um but anyway, to bring my story is that uh, so I'd be setting up my my and I'd be cooking up. Uh, then I start the fire, and he just didn't watch me the whole time. He wouldn't really interact with me or anything. And I and I pull out a bunch of uh, uh, like spinach and stuff like that, cooked it up in the in one pot, and and cooked up some uh, meat and, and I, on the on the on the uh, fire there and. You know, I was waiting for him to come forward and try to take my food, but he didn't. He just sat there and watched me the whole time. It was, I was waiting for it. You know, I had my, I had my uh, firearm on my side. I was ready. You know, I was ready. I didn't have to pull it once. This was the thing that freaked me out. He come and he popped himself down right in front of me, sat there Indian style, right in front of me. And all he did was point at the vegetables. He didn't point at me. He pointed at the vegetables. So I pulled the the, the, the vegetables, 
off the uh, off the fire, the, the spinach I had on the fire, off the fire. I let it cool down, and I handed it to him. And he took the whole bowl, of course, one gulp, he, he gulped it down. And I'm freaking out because I'm, I'm, I'm pr- wishing I had some kind of video camera to videotape this because no one's going to believe this, right? Right. He hands me the bowl back. And then I hand him the meat because I figured he'd want the meat. He took the meat and flung it. They sw- what, there was a whole group of them. They were vegetarian Sasquatch. I've never seen anything like it. They did not eat meat. Hmm. Now, I've heard of them. I have heard of them. I know they're out there. But to find those groups are very rare. And when I was telling a, uh, a uh, Native American uh, a chief my story, he said, and, and the Native American chief is from Oklahoma there, and I told my story. What was going on, he just said this. There is a group of uh, vegetarian uh, uh, Sasquatch around here, and they actually protect humans from the meat-eating Sasquatch. So if you had, if they graced your presence, that means you were, you were what they thought was a, an innocent and a loving heart individual. You know that you did me no harm to anything. Sure. So that that's the legend anyway. You know, and it just that was the biggest. <laughs> I was scared the whole time. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. I was scared. I had my. I was like two inches. Uh, I had my. My hand was in my firearm the whole time, but I didn't need, need to even draw it. But it was there. It was there. I was ready to. Can you share what region of Oklahoma this was in? It would be like, uh, it would be up in the uh, topper, uh, uh, the upper, in the long part there. Okay. Where that long yep, yep, yep. Strip is. Interesting. Yeah. 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 Be okay. That long strip. All right. And, uh. And it was, I'm, I'm going to tell you, it was uh, the most, I mean, every encounter I've ever had with Sasquatch has always been aggressive. I've always had to, had to fight. I've always had rocks thrown at me. I've always had, you know, uh, them uh, t- break off tops of trees and, and throw them in the road to block my, to block my path if I'm taking a four-wheeler out there, you know. They keep me from going any further. I've had them, you know, chase me, literally chase me. Uh, of course, me being on a four wheeler or a, or, or a motor motocross bike. Um, I've had them chase me on foot, and what they did there is they chased me enough to scare me. They did scare me. I tell you, every time I go out to the woods, I'm scared of death of these creatures. But see, to me, that's the whole adrenaline rush. You know, I'm trying to get them on video. For some reason, you pull out that camera, and it's like uh, it's like kryptonite to them. They're gone. It's like they know and they're gone. And I have, I still to this day cannot figure out how they know what I'm doing. I mean, that's why I say they're intelligent. It's like they will make themselves known, but the minute you pull out the video camera, they're gone. They, right. They're scarce. And, it, and that's just, that's the question there. Are they as intelligent or more intelligent? Do they speak our language? Do they know what? The equipment we have is do we? No one knows. No one can get really that much personal information on these creatures. All we can get is is behavior. That's all we can get. You know, and it's like, you know, footprints and tree breaks and 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 knocks on trees and and when they knock on trees, when they knock on the trees, it's location. When they knock two rocks together. It's a dinner call. You actually saw one of these individuals uh, attack someone in your party. Is that what you had said? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was in the military at the time, and we were on maneuvers, and there was like 15, 20 of them, and there was only 12 in our group. And we come around and bend, and we were shooting. Well, we were on maneuver, so we were shooting blanks. We weren't, you know, on, in a real uh, combat situation. And we divided up into two teams, and uh, these creatures probably thought we had real ammo shooting at each other. And the uh, they uh, the guy had pointed the gun at, at at the party I was in, and all we know is we heard this guy who was pointing pointing the gun at us, uh, shooting the blanks, of course, but uh, uh, just scream earlier we get up there and his head is completely detached from his body 
he's completely ripped apart. You know, and we at first we didn't know what 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 had happened until <laughs> the other people that was with him, the other soldiers that were with him, told us what had happened. And then we seen this big, huge. This footprint was bigger than any footprint I seen in the, in the lower 48. This was. We were at a, at a base. We were at a, a, a military base in Alaska. So uh, okay, they don't use they, they don't use it much anymore. They use it just for training purposes. But we we're up there, and the Bigfoot up there are just huge. Right. They make the ones look down uh, down here on the lower forty eight. They make the ones down here look like they're kids. I mean, these things are huge, and yeah. So yeah, I've seen it. I didn't actually see the actual action, but I seen what was left of the guy's body. There was nothing left. I mean, they totally, you know. And and the weird thing about about it is the guy's heart and his liver was gone. And late, and then later on in life, when I started studying more and more of these creatures, if you ever find an animal with their heart and liver gone. It's more likely a Sasquatch attack, and they go after the heart and liver because that's where the protein is. A lot of times you'll, you'll see a, a you, you'll see a dead carcass, you know, with a heart and liver gone, or you'll see them tossed up in a tree. If the deer is tossed up in the tree, nine times out of ten, the heart and liver is gone, and they're putting the meat up there to dry out, and they will come back for it. Trust me, they will come back for it. Now, I've been up in close. Like I said, I've been up and close personal with a lot of these creatures, and I've had plenty of experiences. And uh, stuff I had figured out, like the at, before I figured out it was methane gas coming out of their fur, I thought it was actual paranormal orbs coming out there, but it wasn't. It was because uh, some of the caves they went into, I tried to go into myself, uh, and I couldn't breathe in there. And then I figured out it was methane, but they can crawl in and out of these caves all day long, you know. So, and it was methane gas. And methane gas, when it hits oxygen, it turns colors, and especially at night. At night, you can see it, you know. Mm. Well, Life's Adventures, do you have a, did you say you have a channel where you've got some videos on it about stuff? I've got, I've got some, I've got some research videos. Okay. None of my research, most of my, most of my research videos have tree breaks. I have a few grunts, and I have some uh, footprints, but I don't have no actual footage of Sasquatch. For some reason, like I said, every time I pull out that camera, it seems like they disappear. It's like they they go just just out of range of the camera or something. You know, I just that's why I say, you know, I'm gonna get them. I'm gonna get them eventually on 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 video. I'm gonna I'm gonna get them. You know, sure. Yeah. I'm gonna figure out a way to do it. You know. And as far as people can say, well, go ahead at night, use infrared. No, they can see infrared. Yeah, you don't want to mess with that. They yeah, can't. Exactly. Yeah, they can see it. You know, they can see at night. They can see at night like we can see during the day. Oh, well, on, my, on my channel, I do everything on my channel besides Sasquatch. Uh, Sasquatch is my number one thing I love to do, but I do my channel is a multi uh, channel. I do everything on there. So. Gotcha. Okay. Um, But. Uh, <laughs> Sasquatch is my number one thing. I've studied it. I've got, uh, I've got a, a doctorate degree in wildlife biology. So you know, I've got, uh, so yeah, I've got, uh, you know, and people say, well, is that a degree in Bigfoot? And I said, well, it's wildlife <laughs> biology is all wildlife, you know, and and uh, so, but some people like joke around, yeah, it's a, it's a degree in Bigfoot because that's what I say. I study cryptids, you know. But they don't have an actual degree for cryptids. They, it's got to be wildlife biology, which covers all wildlife. Fascinating uh, stuff. Well, life. I'm glad you called in. I do have uh, an individual that I, I need to call back. I feel like we could probably talk for a few hours with what you've experienced over the years. So um, I, yeah, I invite you to highway... reach out another time as well. Okay. Oh, uh, sure. No problem. Hey, Highway 24 is loaded with Sasquatch. There's four families down there. I just, oh, I, I knew there was one family down there, okay. but I didn't realize how many were down there because of the way the, the road and the river set up. It's, it's, it, it's a hot spot for them. There's also Highway 9 in Illinois. And it's not such, not, not really a popular highway, but that is also too loaded with, a. Uh, uh, not loaded. It has a few sightings from Sasquatch. And lately, I've been recording the fact that 
sightings in Illinois have been getting larger and larger, and I don't know if it's the fact that they've never really been here before and they're exploring a new territory or because before, like a couple of years ago, when I discovered this, this family in uh, Pecatonica, I was, I'd been out in those woods several times and never heard or anything. And then they, they started popping up. So, you know, but, uh, they've been, there've been a lot of sightings in Illinois and I'm like flooded with it. I, I, I get calls from people calling me, asking me to come research, do research and stuff. But, mm. you know, I want to hook up with the DFRO here, here, but they never, they never return my call. So sure. it's like, you know, here in Illinois. So, but they never return my call. So, you know, it's like, Oh my, hook it up with them, give them some of my information that I got and we can share information, you know? So you are and, saying uh, that you have also heard multiple reports from the highway 24 area. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, that is, <clears throat> um, that is a uh, uh well there's a lot, a lot of deer and a lot of uh game animals down in that area so that is definitely a hot spot for sasquatch uh, uh i had a family from down there call me i don't know how they heard about me and my channel or whatever but they said they see me on uh doing a, a, a live stream because i did do a live stream one live stream so far of uh a research and i guess they watched it they were watching that time they call i don't know how they got my number but they called me and uh asked anybody can come down to the area and do some research and i come up with tracks breaks everything and it was more than just one set of tracks it was a, a family it was i tracked two juveniles uh with a female and a male so it was a, a family unit down there and i thought it was just one family unit but after researching it enough there is a good four family units that I could, uh, uh, count so far. And, and, and I, and I think there's more, cause usually if there's that many, there's, there's, there's quite a few more. They usually right. travel in big packs, you know? And, uh, yeah, but I'm sorry. I, I don't mean, <laughs> I don't mean to see her babble, but, uh, I'll let you go, man. Hey, it's fascinating stuff. I, I hope to hear from you at a later time, man. We can call back in and maybe yeah, we can well, talk I, again. Okay. Okay. Uh, where, where, where are you in, in Illinois? Or where, where are you at? I am based out of Central Iowa. So. Oh, you're in Iowa. You're right yeah. next door. Okay. Yeah. So really, I mean, okay. Five and a half hours, I can be in Peoria, really. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm in. Uh, I, I'm I'm north of there. I'm in uh, Pecatonica, right, right. which is top of the state. So yeah. There you go. Okay. Well, you have a good day. All God right, bless sir. you, man. You got it. Have a good one. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to call back this individual here. Let's see if we can get him. Hello? Hey, is this Alex? Oh, hey, yes, it is. <laughs> hey, this is Alex. Yeah, this is Jeremiah calling you back. I haven't, I didn't get a chance to listen to your voicemail, but I saw a little bit of it. Um, were you trying to call in to share some stuff on the live show? Oh, yes. Yeah, I was. I'm sorry. I didn't know if I was going to be able to make it through or not. I, I tried leaving a voicemail, but then it ended. Okay. So I just called it good. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, welcome um, to the show, and uh, yeah, feel free to whatever you'd like to share. Go right ahead. Thanks, thanks. No, it's a it's a privilege. I, I just to let you know, you know, I've been li listening to your show for a little while now. Um, I think it's a really great podcast. Oh, thank um, you. You know, it's uh, yeah, it's it's uh, I I listen I've listened to like maybe like normally I'm a it's either Sasquatch Chronicles or Bigfoot Society or a couple. You know, there's no sh shortage of Bigfoot podcast, but uh, yours is pretty awesome, dude. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I, I really try to, you know, give people a, a platform to share what they've experienced. So glad that yeah, you enjoy sure. it. But. Yeah. So, yeah, well, um, so I, I guess I'll just kind of go into it. So uh, right up front, I've never personally witnessed a Sasquatch myself, but living where I've lived, so I live in Washington State. Um, and I've had a fascination with Bigfoot ever since I was six. Um, it had to do mainly because, um, of some experiences we had in an area called Willapop Bay over, 
along the Oregon Co- or Washington coast. Basically, my first exposure to anything that had to do with Sasquatch, my, my family once brought home this little um, documentary with Leonard Nimoy. <laughs> Almost everybody has seen it. But um, uh, one time we were camping, we, we used to go to this area called Willapaw Bay, which is near Long Beach, Washington. And it's at the time, it was a little more rural. They've done a lot of logging there recently. But um, we would, my dad, when he took us camping, he took us like, uh, he would take us deep into the woods. So to a point where my mom would be like, why are we out here so far? <laughs> you know, but anyway, we're, there's this one area where we would camp and my mom would note, she'd be like, why is there somebody hammering out in the middle of the woods? Um, she, cause she, she said there was, she'd hear this. She, it was like a baseball bat hitting the, hitting a tree, like as hard as possible. And <laughs> at the time we were all like, Oh, well that's, interesting um you know it wasn't up until later that we realized it was like oh that doesn't make very much sense does it some random guy with a hammer (laughs) hammering out in the middle of the woods but um it's in that area where just weird things would happen you know some of the standard like noise stuff that people would report you know we would feel those occasional like really deep thuds i've heard that reported in a few encounters that i've heard where sometimes prior to a individual witnessing a sasquatch they said that they felt like what felt like some sort of like a 200 ton boulder hitting the ground, like the ground moved really powerfully. I don't, I don't know if that makes very much sense or anything, but um, so we were kind of fascinated with that. Um, And I remember it was, I think it was back in 2002 or 2003, but well, we were camping there one day and we ended up, um, there was a little mud pit not too far from our campsite. We get up in the morning, and my dad's looking down at this mud pit, and I'm like, what's up? And he looks up at me, he's like, look at these. And he sees, well, there are these footprints in the mud. Barefoot footprints, human-like. And we were like, was somebody walking around here barefoot? <laughs> and um, we thought that that was really fascinating. So my parents were like, well, let's call the BFRO. And well, you know, they did some casts. They came out and looked at it. Uh, this this would be like a couple weeks afterwards. And I guess I guess Jeff Meldrum, or I, I guess it was either him or some somebody else. Maybe uh, they said that they believed that the footprints were man made. But I, I to this day, I kind of I must I kind of disagree with them because I was like, guys, we're like literally out in the middle of nowhere. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and none of yeah, and none of us walked. You know, because they they go off of the whole presence of a mid tarsal break thing and they said well this has a little bit of an arch to it so this is probably just a human but i don't know i think it was kind of a misfire on their part but you know i i still think it was probably one of those things i guess we'll never know but um yeah i thought i thought it was a little odd but anyway um so i started just kind of paying attention and asking you know growing up i would ask people about Sasquatch and what they encountered or like things, you know, I had friends that were cynical of the whole thing, but I have a buddy. Um, he's a, I've never hunted, but he's a hunter. So he, he knows pretty well what he's looking at when he's hunting. And one day he, uh, we were like 13 at the time, but he says, Alex, Hey, I got something to tell you. And I was like, Oh, what's up? He's like, so a few, he said that, um, he came up to me and he's like, so I think I saw a Sasquatch and I was like, really? And he's like, yeah. So apparently he was riding his bike with, um, I think his sister and his uncle, they were up in an area in Oregon called Fort, just above Fort Stevens up in the foothills there. Um, I don't know if anyone knows where that is, but well, he says he's riding his bike and he gets a little ahead on the trail. And he says about, I'll have to ask him again, but he says like, maybe a hundred feet in front of him. He says that this thing walks up, walks down from the hill onto the trail in front of him and it stops and it turns and looks at him. (laughs) And I guess he, uh, he, I asked him, well, what did it look like? And he's like, well, it looked, it looked like a giant. um, Basically he said it kind of looked like a King Kong, but it was like, he said it was nine feet tall. And um, he said it did have a cone-shaped head. And th- it, it turned and looked at me for a second. Now, he's, he says that he, he had gotten off his bike and that he kind of, in a moment of panic, he grabbed his helmet and threw it <laughs> in uh, this thing's direction. 
and then he bolted back to ca- like to backtrack towards his sister and uncle and yeah you know that's one of the stories that he told me he says that then it can, he says that he remembers like right as he was doing that that it had already continued walking it stepped off the trail and started walking down into the brush of the hill and he says and then just disappeared and i was like i was like well what color was it and he's like well it was like a really dark blackish color and yeah so that's what my friend uh my buddy kevin told me about years ago he says you know and he's pretty um you know i i trust him because he's been hunting for years also even as a young guy he he always knew what he was looking at but he said he he believed that that's what he saw was a sasquatch so i've always believed him (laughs) um that's wild stuff yeah no no it's it, it is pretty cool you know i know it's not like you know i've heard some pretty crazy encounters on your podcasts which are awesome but you know most of the stuff i have to share are just like um secondhand accounts which is basically what people have told me and they've said yeah share (laughs) share it with whoever you want like um the other one that i found fascinating was sorry i don't want to take up too much of your time man Uh, i just want i want to be mindful of anybody else trying to call in (laughs) no you are good please keep keep going awesome so, uh, what's his name? My dad has a buddy who he's since lost contact with, but this buddy used to be a logger who did some deep woods logging here in Washington state. Well, one day, I guess, while well, he's doing this clear cut and I, I wish I could have found this guy so I could cooperate this and learn where it was. But anyway, he says that they're clear cutting this area and like cascades somewhere. He says he, he looks up onto the hill, not too far up. And he says not one of these things, but a whole family of them walking along the edge, of the, the top of the hill. And he sa- he he says he looks over. Uh, I can't. I can't. He he like looks to one of his coworkers, and then they're like, "What are you know? Like, what are those things?" They're basically, you know, just tall, naked, hairy people. And I guess he took this, and he goes over to a supervisor, and he's like hey, uh, we just saw these things. And his supervisor basically like cut him off and said, do not say anything about those. <laughs> He's like, no, you didn't. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> I, I, I always found that fascinating because even uh, ever since then, you know, I've heard and I, people can think what they want about the whole like cover up. I've heard some crazy theories about like people keeping things under wraps. Some people, I've heard some people say, it, yeah, it's the logging companies. Other people said it's a rogue government age adult agency. I mean, I don't know, uh, but I did find it fascinating that his, uh, he said that his boss was adamant. He says, do not say anything about those. And I was like, and, and so my dad told me that and I was like, huh? So I always thought that that was fascinating. I, I really wish I could find this friend of his because, um, you know, it'd be nice to get just kind of, you know, just some clarification on that. But yeah, yeah, that's what my friend, <laughs> that's what my dad's friend experienced while he was logging. Did you, sorry, um, did you say what area that was again? Yeah, uh, I, it, I don't, it's in Washington, okay. somewhere in the cast. Yeah, gotcha, I gotcha. wish I could say, uh, yeah, because I, I wish I could say exactly where he was doing this. Oh, that's but all right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so my dad, so me and my dad, we do roof care. So often, my dad's been doing this since 89 and he's, he gets around, he talks to a lot of people, like, like someone who needs their roof cleaned up in the hills or that kind of stuff. And every once in a while, he meets somebody who tells him something fascinating. So, um, there was this gentleman that my dad was talking to, this was years ago, but somehow they got onto the topic of Sasquatch and this gentleman was like, Oh, he's like, Oh, you should hear what my aunt, what happened to my aunt. And he's like, well, what happened to your aunt? He's like, Oh yeah. She used to, uh, she used to lit, uh, she used to come out, uh, and find one of these things picking apples off of her tree, like right next to her window. <laughs> and, and he says, Nat, and she would take a broom and hit it on the back of its head <laughs> until it bleeds. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, are you? I was like, seriously? And the guy's like, yeah. And, you know, this is like a third-hand account, obviously, but right. this is what this gentleman told my dad. He's like, yeah, she, 
she had supposedly she had one of these creatures on her property she said it would come out of the woods it would and it would take the apples off of her tree right in her backyard and it i guess it was she was a spunky old lady so i i guess that she ha- was pretty confident in just walking out she'd have a broom ready and she just whacked it and she said it would take off <laughs> that's funny so wow. i always thought that that was kind of funny that's incredible yeah yeah um my uh when my father was young there was this native lady that used to live in his neighborhood um and they would occasionally sit down and listen to her tell stories one time she told she, and she was at and she, she was straightforward she was like oh yeah those creatures are real and she she reflected on a time where when she was younger i guess it must have been she lived on some sort of reservation it must have been here in washington state but she says that one time this was back when the outhouses were outside of the house like you know like 50 feet you know over in the at the edge of the yard she says that they were on a property that had like this woods next to it she says that when she was a little girl she would walk out to use the bathroom but then one time she went out to this outhouse and she says that you know something approached the outhouse and uh it started knocking on all sides of the the outhouse just kind of like tap 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 and i guess i i guess she peeked open to take a look at it and i guess it was uh i guess it was like a younger one of these things that was only about my dad said that she she said it was about the size of an ewok or something but um i'll have to ask him again but yeah (laughs) she says it was like it must have been a baby one and just curious started just knocking on all sides of this little outhouse but anyway she knew that she was like okay i I guess she was still scared so she waited up until it um was on the like knocking on the back of the little outhouse and then she bolted out of it and she starts running towards her house and she says this thing let out a scream and it gave chase it started she says that it started chasing her and she managed to make it into her back door. She slammed the door, and this thing actually hit the door. Right, <laughs> like when she closed the door, it was like, <laughs> yeah. She says it closed. She closed the door, and it hit the door, and then it took off. Oh, I was like, man. oh, that's, that's a little terrifying. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So oh I, man, that's not the first time I, I've heard of a, a. Like you're pretty much. A close call. I mean, almost taken out. Man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've always wondered. I was like, I mean, was it trying to take her or was it just messing with her? You right. know, I, I, I can't I can't really know for sure, but I was like, that's still pretty terrifying. Um uh the uh sorry, um I got a I got a couple more if um yeah, I mean I don't ahead. want to take up too much of your time. Oh go ahead. Yeah. Um uh, so you've probably heard plenty of stuff that happens out of Gifford Pinchot National Forest, right? Uh, once or twice. I mean, I, I've heard over the years from other resources. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, so Gifford Pinchot National Forest is, I, gosh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. That's how I've always said it. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> but, um, but, uh, we used to go camping. We still go camping there pretty frequently. Um, cause I, I, when I go camping, I, we like to be away from people as far away from people as possible so there's this area called goose lake and uh or the four and a little in that area there's an area called the forlorn lakes and there's this area where we would camp and one night back in like 2006 we were camping and we awoke to these really powerful howls and you know we've heard coyotes we've heard other animals we've heard bears we've heard all this kind of stuff we heard these howls and we um and basically they sounded identical to the the puyallup howlers or the screamers i don't know if you guys have heard of that you know and some people have tried to say that the puyallup howlers were just coyotes but that i mean i have a hard time believing that given how powerful these i've heard of that screams were yep yeah so we heard those and you know we i guess we we listened to them for like i don't know i think they were going on for like maybe a half hour and we thought okay that's pretty awesome um but uh 
I, I guess we later found out that there was a couple camping in that same area who were, I guess, closer to those houses. This is what we're, we're guessing, but um, they were closer to the house where they were coming from. I guess it scared them enough so that they took off. But um, uh, oh, wow. like a couple, yeah, a couple years later, we would end up going back to that general area. And so we, we make it to the end of this really far road and we get out of the car and there's something weird like there's no sound whatsoever like we we get out of the car and we're like oh wow it's really quiet here like like the wood the woods is closing in on us and my mom was like paul like she was like i don't want to camp here (laughs) because my my dad will my dad loves camping but sometimes he'll he he'll want to camp somewhere even if it's like a little like uh maybe we shouldn't camp here you know but anyway against my mom's wishes uh we decided that yeah we'll spend a night here but um there was a little abandoned campsite there and and we're talking like this there was a tent there it still had some stuff in it it was tipped over it was just kind of caved in like it had been rained on it probably was there for maybe a few days but i i you know to this day i'm like why did we end up deciding to camp here i still don't really know (laughs) but i guess I, I, I really don't know because we were like, so there's an abandoned tent here with some stuff, almost as if, you know, we can only theorize what actually happened. Maybe they were just being lazy and we're like, hey, we don't need this tent anymore. But we were like, well, somebody's left a camp here and it looks like somebody left in a hurry. <laughs> but anyway, so we're camp- we, we decided to spend a night here. And my mom is just not having it the whole time. She's like, Paul, she's like, there's something wrong here. Like, I, I, I wish I could describe it, but it's just, it's like, th- there's this weird thickness in the woods. And I, I've heard other people kind of talk about this, you know, almost as if there's like some sort of apex predator around. But anyway, so what happened on this outing, I remember, was my mom, uh, my mom got up to use the restroom. She goes out, you know, like in there, you just kind of go out and find a little place in the bushes to do your business. But, um, well, she's out. I don't know. She probably went like maybe a uh, hundred feet, maybe a yard, a uh, hundred yards. I don't know. She went out into the woods to do her business. But anyway, she comes back and she's like, she's not, uh, she's uh, kind of panicked or worried. And she says, Paul, there was somebody babbling out in the woods. Whoa. And I guess, yeah, while she was out, you know, using the bathroom, she says, and, you know, I don't want to sound weird doing this, but she basically hears this, uh, like this, you know, she hears, well, we call it samurai chatter. Yep. Um, yep. Wow. And this, she says that this, put, yeah, she said that this put the hair up on the back of her neck and then she got up and like bolted. And I guess at the time she was just like, uh, I guess she didn't really know what to call it at the time, but she said it sounded like such some guy babbling and saying some weird gibberish. But um, that was, I believe that was the only, uh, I think that's the last time we really experienced anything out there, which was, you know, that's what my mom experienced, but she is today. She's, she, <laughs> she's adamant because when I uh, show her the Sierra sounds, I was like, well, you know, was it like this and she's like yeah that's basically what it sounded like but you know there's some variance you know because we're in a different area but she basically said yeah it sounded like some guy just talking gibberish but really deeply (laughs) and once we figured out it was like you know after we listened to ron moorhead's collection of uh the samurai chatter and all that stuff it was um you know it was a little like my mom was like oh my gosh what what on earth man (laughs) right so yeah, you know, so there there was, you know, that's, I think that's my mom's experience. Um, I, at least that that's the only thing that I can remember off the top of my head that, like, has never been fond of camping as a result of a lot of this. So, right, sure. <laughs> it's, yeah. Wow. Um, Man. Yeah, you know, I know that's an earful. Um, it's, uh, it's the most, um, What's the the most recent thing that I can think of? The uh, um, was my dad's uh, my 
my dad has a lot of buddies, obviously, <laughs> but um, he uh, he's got this buddy who he told me he he said my buddy just told me about his Sasquatch experience and I was like, Oh, I want to hear it. So I actually ended up going and talking to this guy in person. And, um, he told, I asked him, is like, so my father told me that you had a, an experience with the big guy out in the woods. And he's like, Oh yeah, I've seen him. And I was like, can I hear it? And he's like, sure. So he goes on, um, uh, he was hunting this friend. I'm, I can't remember his name. I'm, I'll just call him gosh i'll just call him scott so scott was hunting up in an area near uh, mount st helens near the ape caves so there are certain areas i guess if you go up further you know you can get a you know a hunt how i don't hunt so i don't know all the particulars but um anyway i guess one day he years ago he was hunting he was up in his deer stand and he was uh, he was out looking out towards this little meadow. He was waiting for elk. I guess he said he was hunting elk. And he uh, he's up in this tree stand and he sees a herd come out. Um, and this herd starts moving across the, the field. And this is probably like, you know, two, three hundred yards away from him. And he's, you know, he's watching, he's watching this herd move. And I, and he says that while he's, while this, this herd is moving, you know, they're starting to, scurry into the woods he says he thought initially he thought oh there's some guy following him but he says that this giant thing lumbered out of the the edge of the woods and started following this herd and he says oh yeah and this thing just started it was walking he says he noticed first that it was walking really weird like if it was a man he said it was walking incredibly weird yeah but he said it was also completely black and he says that the way it was swinging its arms i, I it was a little off so he ends up watching this thing walk across and follow this herd. And he says, he noted, it was like, yeah, this is a big man. And I guess he waited like maybe an, I don't know, an hour or so. But he says that he had marked, he had kind of seen where this thing's head, like um, mar he marked basically where its head came up to from a tree. And he said, he said he got out of his tree stand and started heading over towards where he saw this thing's head had ended. And he says, as he's got closer and closer to this tree marker, this marker, he says he started to get scared because he says, um, he told me that he walked up to this and he says he could reach his hand up and then also with a uh, arrow in his hand or something like that, he he says that he couldn't reach where this he thing's head ended. Oh, man. And yeah, he, he said that, um, uh, that that's when he was like, when he was a little terrified at that point. Sorry about that background noise. You're good. You're good. <laughs> um, that, and um, so, yeah, he says that, yeah, whatever this thing was, it was following this elk herd. And he, he told me that this thing was over probably over nine to 10 feet tall somehow. Cause he said he could not reach where he saw this thing's head end. And he, and he, you know, I could tell that he was still some, I some of these people, they, they seem like they deep down, they think they know what it is, but they don't want to be straightforward about it because of the ridicule. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. Said, yeah. Yeah. So that's what, um, that's what this gentleman told me when I was, uh, when I was talking with him. So, and I believe him, obviously, you know, again, these are all just like second, third hand accounts, but, um, you know, I call this my little circle of Sasquatch because I get a lot of people asking me, it's like, why do you believe in Sasquatch? You know, that kind of stuff. And I was like, well, I would, I, you know, I've never witnessed one, but I would basically have to look all these people in the face and tell them, well, I think you're lying. You know, right. that's, and I just can't do that. <laughs> and they have, they have nothing to gain. You know, it sounds like these yeah. people are just, they're just normal people. They have nothing to gain, gain from telling you this story at all, you know? Yeah, exactly. So it was, um, you know, there's, that's basically uh, the, the gist of what happened. I know that, um, I know that in 2017, while well, my sister was on a, there, she had just gotten married, but they were camping up in the Four Lone Lakes area, her and her husband. And, uh, well, I guess they were 
camping nearby and he i guess he walked off the trail a little bit I, either to go to the bathroom or to see something but he says that um uh he said that this thing stood up or something I, i'll have to, i guess i'll have to ask my sister again but she says yeah this uh, her this uh thing stood up um walked and started walking away and my um my ex well he's now ex brother in law but um he he told me that he's just like well it looked like almost like a guy covered completely in moss so i was like well is this guy in a ghillie suit and he's like i don't think so wow because when it yeah he uh, that i i asked him is like you said it was kind of he said it kind of had almost like a greenish color or moss on it i was like and i did tell him i was like well i have heard a few people describe that you know i i don't i don't know if that's super com- common but i asked him i was like well was it a guy in a ghillie suit and he's like uh, he says he doesn't believe so because it, it, when it started walking off, my sister didn't get to see it, but she she says that they could feel it walking, like they, like when this thing started to walk off, it was so heavy that they could feel every step it took in the the ground as it was leaving. Absolutely. So, yeah. So I thought that that was pretty fascinating. You know, the Fordland Lakes and Gifford Pinchot area. That that place is you know people are always hearing like either screams or having some sort of there it, i guess it gets a lot of bigfoot activity so a, a ton but, um, it, an absolute ton yeah. you're absolutely right i did i have gotten a report like the moss thing um your story oh, yeah? actually <laughs> reminds me of it it was a person i was supposed to interview when i was out in oak ridge and it never worked out but pretty much the short version of it is the individual is driving out to crater lake national park and had something cross in front of them on, I believe, 58. And um, this is not a Bigfoot person. This is just a person from a a Facebook group uh, for a town. And she Mm -hmm. said, she's like, the best I can describe it is it looked like a very tall uh, moss man, a a big, big man just covered with moss completely. And I was like, wow, that's that's very interesting. So never got to interview yeah. the individual, but there you go. Kind of similar to what you said. So, no, yeah, that's that. I've always I thought that it was kind of fascinating. Um, yeah, the uh, you know it's kind of I, I am just I'm kind of at that point where I'm just like, well, you know, I'm a working man, so I don't get out in the woods as often as I would like. But you know, some sometimes it's like one of those things where I'm like, well, I kind of hope to see one, but at the same time, I'm might be a little too terrified of that but <laughs> it's kind of you know um my you know my wife and i whenever we can we always try to get up to the foothills and drive mm-hmm. around you know when we get someone to uh babysit our kids for the evening but i mean you know on a i guess on a slightly different no i know uh, you know how some people report seeing lights prior to some sort of bigfoot encounter sure yeah, I, I mean, I don't, I, I don't know if those two things are connected. I do know that sometimes people do see these strange lights up in the, the hills. So uh, this was only a few weeks ago, and we actually got these lights on film. But my wife and I, we're in this area where we knew that because uh, I have a old a church friend. Um, There's this area not too far from here called it's called Silver Star Mountain, and the it's silver star mountain is popular i guess even on the bfro because they have that supposed bigfoot picture they like a hiker took a couple photos of like a sasquatch at the top of the mountain but you know it's not really confirmed some people say it was a guy in a skiing suit but you know i have a hard time believing that because i've hiked to the very top of that mountain but anyway my wife and i were a few few weeks ago we were driving up there and you know we just uh uh, just to kind of explore, but it got late because we, we had watched the sun sunset, and we we saw <laughs> we ended up seeing these weird lights up on the hill, and we we're like, "Oh, is that a car or that kind of stuff?" You know, I you know, and I, I sorry, I know it's a Bigfoot podcast, but you know, I just because um, uh, I know frequently, sometimes I've listened to these encounters, and some people report. That say like with their Sasquatch encounter, they said, "Well, yeah, we've also seen some of these strange like lights up in the hills," and uh, and I'm like, "Oh, that's fascinating too." But yeah, my wife and I recently we believe we saw some of those 
weird lights. And I, I mean, I'm not saying I don't really know what they are, but at first we thought they were like headlights or something like that. But I was like, wait, 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 wait. Cause I was looking at it on a map and I was like, no, there's no car access up to where these things were. And it was just weird how they were, the way they would move, the way they would, um, uh, cause they would light up, go down, like disappear. One of them changed colors and then they disappeared and then reappeared like almost a mile down the mountain. And we thought it was weird. And then I told my wife, like, do you want to leave? And she's like, yes. Cause <laughs> Yeah, aren't right. these like? Right. Yeah, <laughs> I was yeah. like, I get it. Yeah, she, she's because she was like, Alex, aren't those often a precursor to a Sasquatch experience? And I was like, well, I don't, not all of them, but I've heard a few that where that happens. But you know, um, yeah, I mean, we we took a couple short videos of them, and I don't know, we can't really confirm what they were, but they it was just strange. But that's that's about the strangest it's gotten for me. Like while we're up in the woods, you know, still no. I still haven't had my little eyewitness testimonies, but you know, I don't sit, I don't criticize someone who has, cause you know, it's sure I'm so far, I'm so far down the rabbit hole on this that sometimes I have to backtrack and be like, Oh, am I going insane? <laughs> you know, it's cause I, uh, you know, uh, it's one of those things that once you think you get a grip on what Sasquatch is, it's like, well, well what about this? Like what, what yeah. could this mean? It, it, it can go on forever, but it, it is cool to hear from someone like you that has all these anecdotal reports because it does help to right. flesh out other things that uh, people have heard. So I'm just I, I'm thankful that you you called in and um, that you were able to to share some about some areas I hadn't heard stuff from before. So this is a pleasure. To yeah, with well, you. no, I'm. Yeah, no, I'm grateful that you let me on. It's uh, it's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Well, uh, if any, if you hear anything else, feel free to, uh, you can always give me an email at, uh, uh, Bigfoot society at gmail.com. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Have a good one, man. Yeah, you too. That was good. Good stuff. Talking to Alex from Washington state. Hey, is this Candace? Yeah, this Candace. Awesome. How's it going, Candace? Guys, if you can let me know if you can hear Candace right off the bat, that would be amazing. It's good to hear from you again. Well, thank you. Yeah, I wanted to call in. I've been watching uh, the live and everything, and uh, I set up an appointment uh, for, I think it's October 30th, and then another yes. one for November 18th, because I do have, like, a lot of a lot of stuff. Oh, wow. Um. Well, right now, uh, where I live, I'm on my cousin's 15 and a half acres, and I've had a lot of encounters here, and uh, they come up to my window at night, and uh, also, they've been outside the window, and you can hear them sniffing. But I'll be honest, I don't know if it's the dog man thing or if it's actually Bigfoot. And because I've had the encounters with both on this property, uh, I have recorded them doing the whoops and doing the wah, you know, the. Yes, yes. They start out kind of slow, like wah. You know, and it gets real loud, and I've heard the coyotes and stuff howling with them. Uh, I've been gone into town for about um, seven days, and I just got back today. And as soon as I got back out here, uh, the trick knock started, uh, the whooping started. Like, I don't know how to describe it. But I've had encounters since I've been a young girl, and I'm 57, and <clears throat> I do apologize if my voice gets a little shaky and raspy because everything that I have experienced, I've never really felt fear from Bigfoot, Sasquatch, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I've seen them up close. And I've seen them at a distance. 
But I know that there's other stuff. It's almost like the veil is thinning. Um, it really ramped up in 2017 after we had the first eclipse. And uh, I've seen one. I was going into the woods and I was going down to the creek and I'm shaking right now <laughs> because it's like when I tell it, I'm reliving it. Are you okay, Candace? Yeah, I'm okay. Okay. It's just, it's something that, it's something that you have seen in your life you cannot unsee. And I have told so many people, and so many people think I was crazy back in the day, back like a long time ago. And more and more people are talking about it and coming forward with everything. And I know uh, I have followed like Melba Hatchum when she's done a DNA and all these different labs they got sent to. They even done the uh, nuclear DNA and things like that. But it's not just Bigfoot that's there. I know for a fact that I've seen the dog man wear type beans. I've seen the little ones and I've seen the big ones. And I, okay, out here on this property, they have like what's called a knoll, like to live on a hill. And then it goes down into the valley. And I was standing on the knoll on the hill and I was looking into the valley. And you can see through the trees and stuff, um, it's like trails all over. And I'm surrounded by farm fields. Uh, I'm like out in the middle of the woods. And so I was watching. And, you know, like when you're out in the woods and you can hear the other animals. And, you know, I'm a country woman and I've been raised in the country my life. And uh, so I know what animals sound like what, you just know that you know. And everything went dead silent. Mm. Well, I found uh, these sticks in the Y shape. Well, see, on this property that I'm on, there's natural springs and stuff down over the hill. And the creeks have been really dry. And... Uh, I thought I seen one, or I seen something that looked like a tree stump, and I wasn't really paying that much attention because I thought it was a tree stump. And the next thing I know, everything went dead quiet. I got real still, like I didn't budge, I didn't move, but I was doing a 360 kind of in one. I was standing still, but my top part of my body, I was doing a 360 scan. And so I took my phone, and because and I zoomed in where I could see uh, over by the creek where I was headed at, and when I did, uh, I seen the real tall figure that I thought was a tree stump stand up, look in my direction, and it jumped up into the tree. And when it did, I took pictures. So if there's some way I can send you those pictures, I will. And you tell me what you think, because it almost looks like a mama and her baby. But it don't. I, for the life of me, I can't say it's Bigfoot. It looked like something else, but it was on two legs. Absolutely, it went up about fifteen. Candace, it went sorry. up about fifteen feet. I apologize. Real quick, is do you mind? Is are you able to share at least what what state this is from again? Yeah, I'm in Southern Indiana. That's right. Yep. Thank you. I'm in southern Indiana. See, I'm not far from like Brandenburg, Kentucky. It's probably about 35 minutes. Uh, Louisville, Kentucky is probably about 20, 20 minutes, 25 minutes away. Uh, I'm on the outskirts of Clark County, but I have been having encounters in Floyd County, Indiana. Uh, that, you know, where like what I live is not. It, they're small towns, but they're country. They're rural towns. They're not the big city. 
but yeah, I'm in southern Indiana, and there is a guy, his name is Greg, and he does camping at the uh, um, Clark County Forestry and stuff, and I'm not for sure if he, I know he's had encounters at Ferdinand, and he used to do a lot of stuff on uh, YouTube back in the day, but I know he's got a Bigfoot page. Uh, his name is Greg Yost. Why? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've heard of Greg before. Yep. Okay, well, Greg don't live that far. He lives in Jeffersonville. Well, I seen him not long ago, and he said something about wasn't well, going to go to the Indiana Bigfoot Conference or whatever, which I didn't know anything about. But I did end up going. Um, but I told him, I said, you know, there's the werewolf and there's the old people. And I was watching another program uh, on YouTube, and this one man, I don't know who he was, he comes forward and he said there was all kinds of sightings of the pug. They're called pugalogies. Yep. Or like the little people. Yep. And he said they're like trolls. Well, see, I couldn't figure it out because I, ha I have seen them. I, you know, I thought, man, what is going on? Because I've seen these little people running up this great big huge tree that was knocked over in the woods. And see, here, here where I'm at, this is my cousin's property. And they know that Bigfoot's here. And there are trees. Like I have taken pictures of the trees that I'll know. Um, there are sticks sticking in the ground with like why. And to me, that's a marker showing other ones where the water source is because they're not down there by the creek or nothing. I won't go walk back in there, especially by myself. Uh, at first, I did. Till all that, till it all came over me. And I've had close up encounters. Uh, I seen one. Uh, I was living in Floyd County on a 110 acre farm. And I moved from Floyd County out here because where I was, it was real bad. And um, that's where the mind spoke to me. And they told me to quit taking their pictures. Because I was, you know, I was like, never really, it didn't dawn on me that I was getting their pictures. I was just taking pictures because I'm out in scenery in the woods and stuff. And I got confronted by them. And they told me, from now on, you take the picture, delete it. Or, you know, to get, they didn't say delete it. They, they told me in my mind, no more pictures. Get rid of them. You know, do away with it. They do not like electronics. So For some reason, they can pick up on them. No, absolutely, Candice. And I know we're, we're going to be talking in the future multiple times. Um, but I wanted yeah. to ask you a question. Um, so you've already yeah, said you've been... Can ask me anything. You, you've been contacting with them through MindSpeak. Have you ever, Jeff brought this up, have you ever told them that you have boundaries, um, you know, whatever's there, um, must respect your wishes? Have you, you have kind of drawn a line in the sand with them at all? Yeah, I did when I was in Boy County. But out here, I haven't because, let me tell you why, Okay, uh, I'm not the ones that out here where I'm at right now. Now they come and look at look in the window and everything, but that's what I'm saying. I, I've seen them and I hear them whoop 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 and all that and do the treatments and all that stuff. But from a distance out here, the ones that put the I guess the fear on me is the uh, dog man. It's the werewolf type beings. And see, a long time ago, well, really not that long ago, but over uh, from, I'm going to say from 2012 until, 20, until 2020, I took pictures all the time and I had hundreds of pictures of footprints. 
I'm talking big ones and everything else. I share all that information with somebody. And the next thing I know, my whole phone went dead. My, all my pictures were gone. Mm. Everything that I had taken was gone. I don't know where they went. I don't know who took them. I don't, they got into all of my electronic devices and, and I had to actually, the phone I'm on right now, I had to, I had to bring a new phone. Uh, I had two iPads that will not come on, that won't work. Everything got wiped. And it was after I shared all those pictures or, you know, had told about it and stuff. And uh, I did share some of the pictures. And the next thing I know, I go to use my phone. And I, this is when I was in Harrison County. Uh, I was at t- help taking care of a friend's mother. Because I was very in the And I, I came back from there. But I had shared pictures and information and stuff. And the next thing I know, by the time I got back to Clark County, all of my stuff was like clean. My phone, everything. Oh man, you know, that, know that's a common thread that I that I hear though is that people have all this evidence and then their electronic devices just totally give out on them or erased or don't work anymore. And it's like, yeah, there you well, go. Mine got erased. Yeah, mine got erased. And here's the thing: the other phone that I had, and the, uh, even the camera and stuff, everything got wiped out. Like I. You know, and I had so much good evidence. It was just, oh, I, and I knew that I had it up on a backup station and all this stuff. So I had to get everything brand new, even a new, like new emails, new everything. I could, I still to this day c- cannot get into my old email, not even with my passwords or nothing. Everything that I had got wiped or got gone. Let's put it that way. Right, right. Candace. Would you would you be able to share with us a, a time where uh, things just got like they got super intense? Maybe you had like uh, it sounds like you've had some really close up sightings. Yes. Yeah, you want me to tell you? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I was standing in a creek. Uh not long ago about a year ago maybe and i was down in a creek bed and uh i've seen this and i'm always looking for arrowheads and i just like being in the woods and being in the creeks and stuff and uh i like rocks and i've seen this really really neat rock and it looked like a heart shape and something told me hey get that rock you know so i've been over to get the rock and when I come back up there was one standing right there next to a tree staring right at me and he was blonde he was uh, like a strawberry blonde color and he looked like he had been groomed uh, and he was male uh, his skin was kind of gray I'm not going to say a dark gray but gray like a light leather gray and his face, okay, like he didn't have hair, say, on his face. It was like if a man had a goatee. Right. Okay. Yeah. But it was long. It wasn't long around the lips. Like the lips, I couldn't really tell. Like, but I was saying in my mind, you know, like the Lord's Prayer, <laughs> you know, and I couldn't move. I was stuck in one one place, and he didn't move. I didn't move. And his eyes, I'm not going to say they were black, but they were dark. Like, I have dark brown eyes. His eyes were darker than mine. And uh, uh, he didn't, like, growl at me or anything like it was like we were both in shock 
And uh, I think he was more like a juvenile, and I would say he was about seven foot tall. I just could feel like what he was feeling, if that makes sense. Like, mm-hmm. like uh, uh, I don't want to hurt you, so you need to look away type of thing. And then there was a dark one that came up from behind. Like, I could only see half of it that it come up from behind a tree. And when it did, I looked down. And when I looked down and back up, they was gone. Man. And when I left there, I wasn't by myself. There was other people. There was two other people with me, but they weren't like in my spot. They was further down the creek. And when I looked back up, I don't know why I looked down, but I did. And when I looked back up and they were gone, I backed out of there. I didn't turn around and run until I got to the other side of the bank from being inside that creek. Okay? And the other one that I've seen up close, uh, I had told about that where his face looked like Mr. Magoo on the on that cartoon yep, show. Yeah, I remember that one, yeah. The, yeah, he, now, look, listen, I'm going to be honest with everybody. He did not look like a Bigfoot to me. He looked like a giant. He was red hair, fire engine red hair on his head, and he had barely any hair on his body. This, this being's body, he did not have a lot of hair on his body. And, okay, hold on, I'm shaking really bad when I talk about this one, because this one, the big red, red-headed one that I've seen, his hair, he reminded me of pictures that you see of, like, giants oh, wow. that used to live in those days, how what they talk about. Oh, yeah, this was in the middle of the cornfield, and it was, like, in November, and it had been raining. I'm going to say towards the end of October, first part of November, because it was cold out. It was jacket weather, kind of like how it's getting cold now. And it had been raining, and there was a big puddle out in the middle of this cornfield. And uh, because we stopped the car and everything, and I got out of the car. I was wanting to take pictures, and I couldn't get the daggone thing to work. It would not work to take no pictures or nothing. Yeah. And, um, I guess I got lasted, you know, like a, uh, what do they call that? A sonic boom or something like, you know, where you can feel, I'll tell you, it goes, womp, womp, Like infrasound? Womp, womp, womp. Yes. Yep. Yes, yep. that. Yep. But this, this being uh, was massive. He was 12 to 15 feet tall, oh not tall. He was huge. This was out. This was out on a backcountry road. You know, like that's the first time I have ever seen anything like that. A Southern this, Indiana. This, he reminded, huh? Yeah, Southern yeah. Indiana. Yeah, this was on a back road going towards between. Uh, if anybody's from Southern Indiana, this was on back road going from um, Highway Three from from. Uh, Charlestown, Indiana, Scottsburg, and it's and it's a back, it's a it's like a little highway, but it's just considered a backcountry road, and uh, yeah, and, and I the one that seen it initially, and I kept talking about Bigfoot that day. I said, you know, there's a Bigfoot feed back here in that farm because there's there's a house that's on this hill, and then there's this huge barn. And it's just covered by the woods, but you can still see the barn. And then down below it, it's nothing but cornfields and fields before you get to, like, this bridge where you take a left or a right, you know. And uh, I just felt like there was a Bigfoot back there for some reason. And I said that, and the next thing I know, we're pulling over because this thing is massive. But he did not, and his body was white. He was so white, like... 
really white, like pale white. And but he was so tall. I never seen. I've seen him tall. I would say the tallest Bigfoot that I think I, I have ever really seen or encountered, like where I've seen him up close, is maybe 12, 12 feet. Um, I wish I could take a tape measure and see how tall they really are. But this looked like a, a red-haired giant. This looked like he didn't have no hair on his body, and he looked older. Um um, yeah, I mean, I can draw, I have, actually, I have drawn pictures, and, um, I know that I've seen the dog man, a werewolf, whatever you want to call it, uh, I know that they're here, I know that Bigfoot's here for sure, and, uh, uh another one that I've seen, see, and my daughter has seen them too, and, uh, She's seen the same blonde-haired one that I've seen. We both have. And I've seen them shape-shift. I, I don't know if that's a Bigfoot or not, but uh, it looked like a Bigfoot. And then the next thing you know, it went down to the ground. Its belly was to the ground. And it looked like it was doing a spider crawl. It was crawling like a spider. And somebody told me... I was explaining that to them, and they said that sounded like a uh, one of them other things. Uh, okay, and it was gray in color. It was. It looked like it had come from underneath the ground. To be honest about it, the, this one that was doing the spider crawl, um, it almost looked look like a, like a cross between um, kind of like a wolf but it didn't have a big snout on it but its hair was really matted and it was kind of gray looking and it was a real dirty gray um, I don't know like when you burn charcoal in a grill mm. and it starts cooling down and it's that gray look yeah that's what color this look like. Yes, and I do have some pictures, but um, especially the one that I just seen here a few months ago that jumped up into the tree, and it it jumped way up. If I zoomed in, and I did get some pictures, I got like four or five of them because I stood in one spot, I didn't move, and I took pictures back to back, and I told me to get my butt back to the house. And that's what Absolutely. I did. Um, if, yeah, if no, you, I can tell when I'm outside. Yeah. Sorry, if you have... And most of my sightings... It, I was just going to uh, tell you real quick before I forget it. If if you have photos that you were wanting to send, I do have an email address. Yeah. If you could send it, uh, it's bigfootsociety at gmail.com. That might help our future interviews that we have together. Okay. Well, I know that I've got two of them. Okay. I know that some things can't be said, you know, yep. uh, but other things, I'm telling you, I would not ever lie about nothing like this. I, and I'm a retired nurse. Yeah, I've been in the medical field for 39 years, so I know what I'm looking at. Absolutely. And I've been raised out in the country my whole life. I will definitely send you some pictures. You can tell me what you think and what you don't think or whatever. Okay. Uh, people don't have to believe me, and I, I have some that where it looks like, it looks like they have faded. Like I seen them when I seen it with my eyes, because there was something that was really, really black, and I was like, "What in the world is that?" And so I took pictures, and you can still see in my pictures, <clears throat> but it's almost like, you know, the movie Predator. Yep. I got them. It's like I got the picture right when they was trying to go into me not seeing them. You see what I'm saying? Okay. You can see it, but it's like they're fading. Gotcha. Oh man, this is crazy stuff. Yeah, when we when we talk, we are gonna have to start at the beginning and just go through the entire thing if we can. I think that would be great. Yeah, because I know. Look people i apologize i'm all over the place 
But let me tell you something. I know what I've seen. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm still experiencing. Yeah. Uh, they come up to my bedroom window, and I don't know if it's actually Bigfoot or the dog man, but I hear them sniffing, sniffing like a dog. You know, like in the summertime when you got the windows open and stuff. Right. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. And I've got recordings uh, where they're whooping and stuff like that. I mean, I've been woken up. I'm, I get woke up all the time. Uh with holl- with them hollering and yelping or uh because I know the coyotes I heard the coyotes screaming. Sounds like a bunch of witches or women out there screaming. I've heard babies crying oh, in the dear. woods. Really? Oh no. Yeah. What's that mean? So usually that means uh they're trying to to get someone to go into the woods. So Whenever you hear that, don't go into the woods. Okay, Candace, please. I know. That's yeah. what I know. Yeah. I know. I've heard the baby, the baby crying. Yep. And see where I was at in where I was at in Charlestown. Okay. It was all wooded too. And I had to move from there because it was really bad. And uh, one of my friends, she still lives over there and she sees stuff all the time. But over here, and my cousin, her land, see, there's, I'm on 15 and a half acres here, and then they got 10 acres down the road. Well, her husband was in a bad motorcycle wreck, and so now he's got Alzheimer's, and that's why I'm here helping her out mm. and everything. And I have told her, and see, he walks constantly, and he's not really old. He's only 61, but he walks constantly. On these trails, he was born and raised out here, and it's like you can tell him. I have told him there's things in these woods that you can't stop him. But I have heard like babies crying. Oh boy! Like, he, okay. Off in off in a dis off in a distance. Well, mm-hmm. see if you okay on the fifteen and a half acres when you get to the other backside of it where you cross a creek. There's old there's like another two or 300 acres back here behind us and it has old cabins and stuff where it used to belong to a church a long time ago and they used to use them cabins as a camp. Well, one of them still in really good shape and in between there used to be tobacco fields and corn fields and stuff. But see, when I go outside and they got three dogs here, they're all, uh, Border Collie and stuff like that. And the one day, uh, about three or four weeks ago, I went out here by the barn, and all of a sudden, this fear come over me. And when it did, the dog grabbed the hold of my dress and started pulling me back. And I knew right then and there to stop dead in my tracks. Because there's two big dogs that stay in the house, and there's one that stays out on the back back patio and stuff and see I bet Nuno is the only one on the back side of this house going up to the woods and stuff and the other big barn that's going down a hill into the valley I know that they go stay in there I know that they're there and I've heard them on the roof too I've heard something on the roof I don't know what it did on the roof But yeah, Oof. and when I was down in Charlestown, living over there, uh, I'm trying to think that that's where I seen the uh, spider crawl, that real dirty gray one, do the spider crawl at with the, over there in Charlestown, and uh, uh, that patch of woods, it was not a real big patch of woods over there less than a half an acre but it's all it's like a moat that runs through there with the creek and there is stuff that has dug its way like tunnels under the ground there's like tunnels going under there My goodness. and then they take the, they take the tree branches anytime any of y'all are in the creek beds 
and you start seeing the tree branches up against the base of the creek and stuff along the sides, and you think, oh, that's a beaver dam, you better think again because I know that's where that thing come out of because they're not all beaver dams. There's tunnels under there. And I, and I have whipped all this stuff. And see, they got a friend that's coming hunting on this property. And I asked him, I said, do you believe in Bigfoot? He said, no. I said, well, you better keep your head on. I said, you better yeah. keep your head on a swivel. I said, because there's Bigfoot back there, plus there's other stuff back there. He just looked at me like I was nuts. I said, okay, you'll find out. Yeah, he's going to learn. He's going to learn pretty quick, it sounds like. Wow. Uh, yeah, because they are here. They're back there. Oh, yeah, southern Indiana. Everybody thinks it's like Indianapolis, like a big city right. and stuff, and it's not. It's all country out here. But well, down, right down there by Kentucky, you know, it's like you got to remember that. Yeah, we're not that far. Yeah. Yeah, it's not that far. Yeah, and where I'm at, I'm on, I'm between, I'm right outside of like Jeffersonville, Indiana going into the country like little suburbs little towns and i'm on the outskirts of the town so i am out in the country you ain't gonna if you break down out here you just better go to the nearest house you can find right because it's a good long walk oh my goodness but yeah i was wondering what it meant when i hear the baby cry yeah it's you know thankfully you know enough that not to go in the woods but there's people i've talked to where you know they are hearing their own name being said from the woods or they're hearing the voice of their significant other and then they are going into the woods after it and i keep i try to oh no to, i'm see, like uh -uh. you can you can't do that because you will not come out you like you got to be really careful with that stuff you know no i know no, I do know, because I'm going to tell you something. I can just go out their back door and go out on the back the back patio back here, uh, and I can feel them. I can feel them. It is no lie. I don't know if it's because what it is, I feel this uh, vibration. I start feeling the vibration, and it's like, womp, womp. Wah, wah. Yeah. It's that it's hard for me to explain it, but it's any time I go into the woods, it's any time. Not I'm not going to say any time because I've been in the woods and had fun and had a good time and not been bothered at all. But it's when I start feeling that sensation in my body, mm -hmm. and it starts in my feet. You know, yeah. and I and my dad, my dad was Native American. And uh, I was raised around knowing a, a lot of stuff. My dad taught us. But I know that when I was a young girl, we had encounters. Because I told you I'd climb a tree. When I was 10 years old, and we was way down in the way, like, at the base end of three acres, okay? Because we was like a big cookout. And I climbed a tree, and, and on the other side was like five or 600 acres. And this was in Georgetown, Indiana. And back then, it was more farmland instead of subdivisions. And I was up in that tree, and I told my dad, I said, Oh, Dad, look, is that a baby cow? And he said, yeah, drinking food from Mama and stuff. And I was up in the tree, and we was watching it and everything. And he told me to be real quiet. It wouldn't scare, him, scare the baby, you know. And then all of a sudden, it stood up. It stood up yeah. and looked at us or looked at my dad and it turned around and walked away. But this one was only probably about five foot tall and it, cause it was a little one and it was drinking from that cow, it, from that cow's milk. Really? And it was on all fours. Yeah. We thought it was a baby. My dad told me it was a baby cow. And when it stood up and walked away, it was solid black. And when it stood up and walked away, it, it stood up, it looked over the cow at my dad. And my dad told me to get my my behind down out of that tree and keep my mouth shut because we was having a big cookout. He, he didn't want to eat it and freak nobody out. But he said that was not a cow and you don't have to tell nobody. So 
Candace, I want to clarify a few things. I think we did talk about this before in the past, but so you're saying that was it? Do you think it was maybe a juvenile? Yeah, yeah, it was. It was a small one. Okay, and it, it was, was thin. It wasn't. It wasn't real tall, and it wasn't real bulky. It looked like a kid because we thought okay. it was a baby cow. Okay, and it was drinking milk directly from the cow. And it was underneath the mama cow, and it was sucking on her nipples. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, it was, wow. it was drinking from the cow nipples. Yeah. And that's why my dad told me to be quiet up in the tree because I was climbing the tree, being a kid, climbing the tree. And my dad's like, uh, don't be making a bunch of noise up there. You know, just climb the tree and be still and watch it. Just watch the cow. And then when, when it got done, it stood up and it looked right at my dad. And my dad told me to get down out of that tree now. <laughs> Yeah, and I come down the tree because I said, Dad, what is that? I didn't know cows could stand up like that. He said, that wasn't a cow. (laughs) That was not a cow. uh, That's the only time I've heard something like that happen. And if anyone else has has heard of that, like, because this is going to be on the the podcast eventually, uh, feel free to email me if... I've heard of strange things with horses, but but not with cows. That's a a new one. Um, well, yeah, I have never really seen them with the horse. I know that they'll, they'll, uh, I know they take advantage of horses. I've heard that before. Yeah, they do. Yep. And they, braid hair and other things. Yeah. 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 Where they do stuff with horses. But yep. as far as seeing them with the horse, I have never seen that. But yeah, I did see one. Yep. When I was a little girl, we seen one uh, drinking from the mama's, the mama cow. Wow. Ooh. And we thought it was a, yeah, we thought it was, we thought it was a calf and, you know, dad just wanted me to be respectful of it, you know, and not hoop and holler or make noise or nothing like that. When it got done drinking, it stood up and looked right at my dad and it turned around and it walked right, right back down the hill. Incredible. You know? Oh man. And, mm. Yeah. Yeah. And then from the time I was 10 and then when I was 12, when we were building a clubhouse back in the woods, that's when that one that jumped. I told you I've seen a, uh, like a strawberry blonde one then, mm-hmm. and it also had gray skin. It also had gray skin too, and it looked human. They did not look ape. They looked more human. Now, the nose, that was what I get to tell you before, is the nose on it, okay? That giant the solid white one that we've seen, it had a human nose. Its nose wasn't flat or nothing. I'm telling you, it looked like okay. Mr. McGee. Yep. And but the other one, uh, their nose were flat. On like the bridge was flat, but the tip of it came out. You know, like a regular nose, and they had really a wild like a uh, wide mouth. They had a wide mouth. Uh, like, um, I don't know. I don't want to say Planet of the Apes type of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe a mouth like that is how I want to describe the mouth. But the nose, the uh, bridge of the nose was flat. But there was a tip. Gotcha. Yeah. Wow. Oh, you know what wow I'm saying? Stuff. Yeah, no, I, I exactly know what you're saying. Absolutely. Yeah. Candace, um, we, we are going to ha- have some great chats coming up um, in the next few months for sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I've kept journals and stuff too about all my experiences. Oh, that's great. A lot of people don't do that. that. Yeah. I have wrote stuff down. Yeah. Did you say you had recordings as well? Yes. Yes, I do. Is that on your computer or how are those recorded? Uh, On my phone. Okay. Are you? No, everything that I had got wiped out. Yeah. 
No, because I have to set my phone in the window. Oh, okay. So you're saying those recordings are, they were erased, right? Yes. Everything that I own. Man. But I have recent stuff. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I had, all I've got now, yeah, I have two iPads I can't even get into. Jeez. Yeah. Everything that I had that was electronic. Uh Uh-huh. See, like where I'm at right now, we don't even have the internet. I have to sit up here. By, I have to sit close to my bedroom window for everything to come in because there's no internet out here. Man, that's yeah. real stuff. That's really <laughs> so everything really that I stuff. have. Yeah, everything that I have, I have to either go outside, you know, to get the signal to come in, and like you're know, talking to you on the phone so that nothing gets cut out or anything. Yeah, I have to sit up here close by my window. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. I go back into town. I I can send you everything. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, I I don't want to put you out, but um, if you do get a chance to, that would, that would definitely help out uh, before the, the upcoming chat. It would have to be Tuesday because um, that's when I'll be going into town. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Um, Yeah. Well, when I'm in town, I got internet and everything. Everything works real good. Gotcha. Yep. Makes makes sense. Well, hey, Cass, I could talk to you. I could talk to you for hours, but I'll tell you what. I think, I think we're gonna have a good time with these upcoming chats. Um, but uh, yeah, and like I said, I've kept journals, and I go back through my journals about things I've written down because. I had experiences uh, uh, just from like when I was 12 and then I didn't have any more experiences until I was like 15 and 16 okay. when they used to come up to my bedroom window. You Wild know, like stuff. there was like a time period or maybe they was following me. Maybe they was around me and I just didn't ever pay attention because I was a teenager. Yep, exactly. You know? There you go. Yeah, that could be it too. Mm. Yeah. But I'm telling you, I can, I can pretty much. I don't know if it's in my bloodline or what, but I can feel them when they're around. I can hear them from pretty far away. You know, if they're making sound. I know my. I watch my surroundings, but I don't go in the woods around here. I'll go out a little ways to the knoll. But ever since I've seen those sticks in the ground, uh, where the the spring is and the creeks are real dry i get real bad feelings or if i walk out there by myself everything goes dead quiet like silent you could hear a pin drop Mm. and something always tells me to get back in the house or get inside or get up by the house that's wild yeah i mean you're yeah yeah well, it's like they know when you're home and they know when you're not. Right, exactly. Has any anything ever slapped the side of your house? Uh, if it's on the side, I mean, this place is pretty well insulated. Okay. The only experiences that I've had as far as, like, they haven't really slapped the house or nothing. They come up and they like to look through the window and they like to sniff. You know, like sniff the air. Yeah, and I'll tell you another another way I know that that when they're out there is because you won't hear one dog make a peep. Oh yeah, it's 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 definitely it's like quiet. Yeah, they hide. Yep, they hide. Yeah. Oh man. Mm-hmm. Wild, wild stuff. Well, Candace, I appreciate you calling in tonight. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna well, have some great chats in the future, unpacking this. But thank you so much for for calling in tonight, Candace. Okay. Well, thank you. Yes, thank ma'am. You very much. We'll talk to you later. Right, bye. This is wild. This has been a, a great show. Thank you to everyone who has called in. Um, I greatly appreciate it. I'm checking something real quick. Um, 
Yeah, some great, great interviews coming up. Man, we had almost 250 people. I just want to shout out a few th things before we um, we call it a night. Uh, th special thank you to Jackie Barnes for uh, gifting five people memberships. That is extremely nice of you. Uh, kudos to Jackie for hooking some people up so that they can listen and w they can watch to watch episodes days before they're public for everyone else. And also, I watch shows when I'm editing and stuff for Bigfoot Society. One of the ones I watch is the Not So Perfect Bigfoot Show. It's a great up and coming show. I like listening to the up and coming shows. Um, so make sure you're subscribed to the Not So Perfect Bigfoot Show. It's another Bigfoot themed interview show and some really, really great interviews on there. So make sure that you check it out. Um, good stuff, but guys, make sure that you're subscribed to this channel, share it with your friends, uh, make sure you hit the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any future lives like this. But yeah, this, uh, this is a really good call in show tonight. You guys rocked it. Um, good stuff. I appreciate y'all being here. And as always, if you have an encounter something you experienced that was, uh, strange and you want to share it with someone where it's a safe environment, please reach out to me, bigfootsociety at gmail.com. And uh, we will see you next time all. Have a good one. Please take a minute to help out the show by subscribing on YouTube, making sure you hit the bell so you don't miss any notifications, and share the episode on YouTube with a friend. Also, if you're listening to us on a podcast... Thank you so much. Make sure that you're subscribed. Share the show with a friend. Really, it's all about sharing the show wherever you can. If you've had a Bigfoot encounter related to the following or know someone who has, please reach out to me at BigfootSociety at gmail.com or pass on my email. Here's a list. If you've had any encounters in Oregon, which I'm sure there's probably a few of you out there, please feel free to reach out immediately can use email bigfootsociety at gmail.com. A special thank you to all the Bigfoot Society Patreon and YouTube channel members. It's your support that helps keep the show going, and I extremely appreciate it. If you want to join in the fun, you can join over at patreon.com forward slash the Bigfoot Society. I'll see you there. And again, thanks for listening.